GT University welcome the new students of this to this university. One would always say that we are not able to do that well in our academics or in our studies and uh, somebody else does very well. What is the reason? Uh, I am going to highlight only two things here for the benefit of all of you. One, that you, can, you are as brilliant as anybody else you would ever imagine someone to be and you are in the best of the places to perform very well. That's going to be the crux of whatever I am going to talk about. About the presentation, I can come on some other day and talk about uh, our research areas and uh, how good it is to carry out work in this and how simple it is to carry out work in this. Normally anybody who comes and gives a presentation would always say, look, you don't get into my area, it's very difficult, it is extremely difficult to work in this kind of a field. So don't venture into this. Uh, I am the one who is a super lady person, I only can do it. But I don't put it that way. I say that everybody can work in the area I'm working in. And with simple tools, you can perform as well as anybody else does. Well, let me come to the point. Very respected Professor Dogra. The moment uh, I heard his name, I said, are you from Ames? He said, yes. So he's a very well-known personality from that institute. Professor Ajay Kumar, who was kind enough to invite us, and my other colleagues here, uh, from the chemistry and other physical sciences departments. It is indeed an honor to be here amongst you to make a brief presentation. I am not going to speak too long, but then uh, whatever I am going to talk about, students will find it very useful. And as I said, the, the research talk will be uh, given sometime, uh, sometime some, some other day when uh, you will be in better framework and I also would be able to have a lot of time at my disposal and I will introduce that. The name itself, you should consider yourself very lucky to be here because this uh, university is named after Shri Guru Gobind Singh. If you look at the annals of history, you will not find a second parallel to Guru Gobind Singh. You will find uh, a person of that eminence in scholarship, you will find a person of that eminence in war strategy, you will find a person in that sense in terms of philosophy, but all these combined into one individual is hard to find. He was a great war strategist. Many would not know. He was a great scholar of Persian and Sanskrit. And many people in very eminent universities across the world have carried out research into his writings. There is a prayer that he has authored called Jab Sahib. It is totally purely in Sanskrit words, and it's a treat, it's a poetry of the highest standard. So that's another side of his personality. And the third, he was a great warrior. The kind of wars that he strategized for our society, I think it is, uh, when you read, you'll come to know the greatness of this, this uh, guru. The last point, which is again very difficult to find out, a person sacrificing his father, his four sons, his wife, then ultimately his own self. That is an example which is very difficult to come by. So this university is named after such a great guru. There is no reason why you should not be doing that well. The blessings of this automatically would be showered onto you if you decide to do very well. And you can, let me tell you. That's the uh, aim of my talking to you. Uh, we are all very religious people, the society is very religious, we believe in ethics, we may not practice ethics, that's a different story, but then we do believe in it, even if you go to the worst of the characters, even he would talk about ethics. Since we believe in that, there is no reason of uh, doing very well if you listen to what I have said. Now two things come to our mind, 
First thing, we couldn't get into medicine, we couldn't get into engineering, we couldn't get into the career probably that I wanted, and that's why I've landed here. That's the kind of feeling you will be getting. Had you been a little brilliant, you would have got into some other career, you would have got into IAM, such, some such things feeling you will be getting when you sit across and think about your own self. Or your parents would have forced you into this. Your parents would have uh, forced you into a career of medicine or engineering or somewhere else. You never wanted to be this. You probably would have loved becoming a writer or a motivator or whatever. Had there been a parent like uh, what Sachin Sandurga got, probably you too would have been uh, shining in your own areas wherever you wanted to be, but then you could not be. Ultimately, you have landed here. Now, having landed here, you would be a little depressed. What am I going to do? Am I, am I in the right place? Am I in the right country? Am I the right man to do this? You know, shed all your fears. You are, as I said, as brilliant as anybody else is. And you are in a place which is the right place for you to touch more if you feel like, if you wish to. I prove two things. One, you are, you are brilliant, you are focused, but you decide not to be. I'll prove this in the next one minute. You know, we have all seen movies in our career. I, I would have seen a lot of movies and I remember those, if you tell me the story, song, or the, the actors, or the kind of dresses they were popularized, I'll be able to tell you everything. Same is your case. If I tell you about a movie that you would have seen, you would narrate the story. Nobody told you to remember. Nobody told you to remember those songs that you, we find you are humming here and there. But you do remember. How is it that you remember that? You know, when you see a movie, first thing is you pay out of your pocket. And uh, when you enter the hall, you find a screen and pitch dark uh, hall, auditorium, and you can't see your own hand. So all you see is the screen, nothing else. Who's sitting on your right or left, you don't know. So you, you, if you are focused, you are forced to focus on that screen. At that time, you don't think of anything else other than what you are watching. Your 100% concentration is on that. And the result is you remember everything. Dialogues, name of the actor. Even if I tell you after 10 years, what is the story of this film, you will be able to tell me. We all remember what Shole was. Nobody has told me to remember that. But take the contrast to in your, in your own house. When you look at a similar kind of a movie on television, you don't even remember half of that story. You don't even remember the name of the movie. You don't remember who the actors were. What is the reason? Because you are not focused. You are watching the movie on TV and your lights are on. What is happening around that? You are uh, observing that as well. Somebody attends a phone call. Oh, did you attend the class in college? Was this held? Somebody gets a phone call. Have you paid that bill? All things that you are watching here and there, your thoughts are getting diverted to that. The result is, this lack of focus leads you to out of that whatever you are doing and you don't remember anything out of this. Maybe 25%, 40%. Just think of this and you will find that if you focus, if you concentrate, if you do everything thoroughly, you are as good as anybody else is. You would have heard the name of uh, Bhagwan Rajnish, uh, an ordinary MA philosophy student who went on to become a teacher, taught for about 10 years, didn't know much English, was not able to converse properly, would speak very bad Hindi also, pronunciation was awfully bad. But then he decided to convey certain commentaries to the world and he started reading on his own. The result was, with this absolute focus, he became such an ardent reader that he, he would read 60 pages in a minute, in, a, in, a, in an hour, and would remember everything for better. Photographic memory he developed with this power of concentration. And he would write data also as it is. He would look at a table and produce everything. The result was that at the age of about 39, I'm not a follower, but I'm just telling you one of the classic things. He wrote commentaries on all religions. He was a philosopher basically. All religions and some of the best commentaries philosophers will tell you are written by him. He never studied proper English, let me tell you, all was in Hindi. Then he developed this skill of writing in English, learning in English and speaking in English and with that power he went across the world. And after that I am not going to get into that because he developed his own sect and uh, in Pune he had a form, then he had a form in Oregon, USA. 
where he had 54 Rolls Royces and other things. So that apart. What I'm trying to tell you is that if one has a determination, one could do it. If he could do it, there's no reason why you cannot develop that kind of a thing. And if you have studied philosophy, if you have studied psychology, they give a treatment to improve your focus. I mean, I'm not that, I'm not saying that it is a hundred percent thing which works, but one of the things they suggest is put a round hole of black color on the wall, move away from that wall up to a distance of your height and stare in that uh, hole, black hole for a minute. You will find that the moment your attention goes away from that, you will wink your eyes. And in 60 seconds, you will wink th three, four times. That means you are not able to focus. If you keep on staring, and you can stare for 60 seconds without winking your eyes, your focus is improving. One of the ways they suggest, try that if you can. So if you improve your focus, you know, whatever lecture you listen to in the class, you will retain 100%. Whatever you read, you will retain 100%. But the moment your thoughts go away here and there, your retention will be reduced to 80%, 50%, 40%, depending on individual to individual. But then this part, if you keep it in mind, it will help you improving. But coming to the reality, we are uh, so-called very God-fearing people. We will start our day by, prairie, by praying to Almighty. And the unfortunate part is when we are praying in the morning, even then we are not 100% with God. That time also we are thinking, oh, I've got to go to STT University. What time I'm going to start? How long will it take? Will I be able to make it on time or not? Our thoughts are here and there. So this is what is required to be having absolute concentration towards whatever we are doing. And uh, I'll make a very paradoxical statement which will bother you a little. Please remember, I keep telling my students that it is the busiest fellow who will find time to do everything in the best of ways. An ideal fellow who has nothing to do will immediately tell you, hey, come on, I don't have time, don't come near me, I'm very busy. The reality will be, he'll be just standing outside and doing nothing. But go to a person who's extremely busy, Prime Minister of the country, tell him we want this thing to be done. You will never hear somebody telling you, look, don't tell me this, I'm, I have no time. You will always get an answer, please leave it here. Let me see how best I can help you. Let me see how soon I can solve this problem. These are the answers you will get. But a fellow with nothing to do with her, come on, I have no time, don't come to me. So this is the paradoxical thing I thought I would tell you, that more work you have, more time you'll get. More time you'll get to play, more time you'll get for leisure, more time you'll get for study, and more time you'll get to develop your mind, which is needed at this time. And let me tell you, where are you? You are in a country which is, the entire world is looking after you. India is a very young country, our 60% population is below 35. The entire world is looking to India. I don't know how many of you have travelled abroad, at least I have gone to many universities where they will have a lecture all of this size and how many students are sitting inside for MSc class, four, five, six. Countries like Korea, Germany, USA, they say, it's, tell Indians to come here, attend these classes. And when I tell them that when I take an MSc class in my own department, the number is 90. And at times you get a feeling you are addressing a political rally. They say, how do you manage all this? I said, well, that's the, that's the kind of uh, training we have. So then why don't you send? They are, they are inviting people to come there and do courses. They are ready to give you scholarship. All they want is after your uh, education, serve there for three to four years, for which most of us are not ready. So the world is looking up to you. You are in that kind of a country at the moment. It's a force to reckon with. I'll, if I tell you a few of these things, you will be shocked to hear. You know, we always say Indians have done great work in IT sector. All over they talk about IT, IT, and I, when I went to Silicon Valley, USA, we went for lunch. You know, 10, 20, 12, 12, 20 people were taking lunch, and uh, there were only two, three Americans. And the kind of crowd which was going around, and the kind of food that was being served, we thought we are in India, and Americans are visiting us in Silicon Valley. Three-fourths of the CEOs are Indians. So this IT, what is it? People say it is information technology. I told them, no, no, it is Indian talent. But what is this Indian talent? What is their number? Their number is, if I tell you that, it is another uh, shocking figure. The number is only 50,000. If I tell you the story of India's education or the scenario here, present scenario is 50% of our school-going kids are not able to go to the school. 
Out of that 50%, 1% would come to the stage of this MSc, where master's level or wherever, whatever you are doing. I don't know whether you are all from MSc or medical science or dental sciences, but at this stage, 1% would come here. Out of this 1%, 0.1% are specializing in certain courses, including IT. And that 0.1% is 50,000 in terms of total number. 50,000 IT professionals are all over the world. Imagine if this number of 0.1 goes to 0.2 or 0.5 or 1%. What a havoc we are going to create throughout the world. But we are not able to do it because 50% of our students are not able to reach the school. If they also join, and they, if this force becomes 10 times more, you can imagine the, the kind of uh, uh, huge manpower we are going to create ultimately. Who is doing it? We are doing it. Indians are doing it. And you can all do it. You are in a stage where you have to take off in your career. This is what is needed. Two more things you just ponder over. 67, 68, probably Douglas will remember. Our food grain production was 40, 47, then 67 metric tons. That's it. And we used to get wheat from Australia, red color wheat. People would not uh, like to eat. And uh, our Prime Minister at one point said, if it goes to 97 metric tons, probably a million metric tons, it will be, it'll be a red uh, letter day in our history. And uh, in uh, 99, 95, then 99, then 2007, and now the unit is 243. Imagine 67, then 94 is what they were imagining, and 243. We are not able to store our grains properly. And no economist thinks on these lines that what do we do about storage? People only think about increasing production. Now we are not short of food. There is no shortage. Who has done it? Same land is there. Have you ever thought of? Same land is there. Same population. Population has gone many folds. But same land producing this much and feeding such a huge population is a great achieve, achievement. Who has done it? You people, your country. And at a stage when you are there, everything is in your palm. We used to go to the library, make notes under all difficult circumstances. But now you look at this and search Mr. Google, and Mr. Google helps you in every way. Actually, it is not Google, it is Google. The word Google means unlimited. But while somebody was writing in America when the company was open, they by mistake misspelled it as Google. So it continued to become Google. Because it's easier, Google is a little difficult. So it helps you. Now entire thing is in your palm. Whatever you want to do, you can do this. So with so many facilities, if you are not able to do very well, or if you are not able to achieve whatever you want to, I think the blame entirely goes to you. And probably nobody has ever conveyed what I am conveying, that you can do as good as anybody else has done. Only thing is you need to focus a little. That's it. If you do that, sky will not be the limit. People will say sky is the limit. I say sky is not the limit. Second thing which is worth considering is milk production. 1962, we used to stand in the queue for three hours to get five liters of milk. Now, if you want thousand liters of milk, in next ten minutes you can get it. Same land, same number of elements, same animals. But population, five times more. But who has done it? There is a person called George Kurian who started the entire movement. And uh, what he has done, there is no time. Sometimes they will come and give you all the details because it is worth visiting that place, Anand. And there is a place called Vidya Valarnagar next to Anand where they started this cooperative movement in all fields, medicine, engineering, education. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place Something to be seen to be believed. If I tell you, you will, it will be hard to explain. So if they could do it starting from there and we can have the massive production in our country, there is no reason why you should not be doing it. And who has done it? People like you. Milk production has gone up. Food production has gone up. Chemicals, chemists like you have worked for agrochemicals and uh, pharmaceutical chemicals and uh, industry has improved. Somebody will say, what do I do, sir? I'll give you one example. If somebody starts making aspirin tablets, nothing else, only aspirin tablets. Besides salicylate, you make it in the lab, it takes about two, three minutes. How many tablets are needed in North India only? 11 lakh tablets daily, which is the shortfall. So if you make the tablet, the cost is going to be about four to five pesos. 
profit element is going to be about 40 to 50 paisa and the tablet is sold or somewhere around 70 paisa to 1 rupee. Think of this, such a calculation. You can make millions, but somebody has to do it. There was a student in my course, there are many, I'm not going to give you all examples because time is short. He says, sir, what do I do? He was from Bihar and uh, didn't know what to do. He says, very bad in English, let, let me tell you. Very bad in language rather. Crude, rustic fellow from village. I said, think of some industry, don't get into job. And uh, you know, he went to study the area around Muradabad. There is a lot of mint which is uh, grown there. It's not Dina Hota, it's wasted. So he collected that, started collecting that, put a socket. The cost is not even 30,000 rupees in a small room. Started uh, extracting menthol oil and uh, different fractions and started giving it to cosmetic industries. Within a period of three years, he had four units. He employed a lot of people who would just collect Pudina and would give it to him. And now his turnover is about 20 crores. It's about seven to eight years now. He started on those lines. This lady, Kiran Bajinder Shaw, Dr. K. H. Garda, put it in the Google and see how they started on a very modest level and rose to this. Narayana Murthy, 1986, he could have got a very lucrative job after doing IIT engineering. But he says, no, I'm going to open a company which is going to be a truly international uh, software developing company. In 86, he started with a, with a capital of 30,000. And now you all know, when we visit Microsoft in Bangalore, they jocularly tell us that be very careful and respectful to the person who's, who's going to bring a glass of water to you. Because that fellow who brings a glass of water his work will be about 40 to 50 crores. Because when this company was open to public, he gave 1,000 shares to every employee. And those 1,000 shares now are worth 10 crores each, total shares. Even a parent is holding 10 crores worth of shares, who gives water. And out of Betty Kitchen, they continue to serve that company. That we don't want, this is a company which has given this up. And that company's turnover, it's, you look at this, you'll find how good it is. But they are very philanthropists also in their approach. They do a lot of good work for society. Uh, one more example, let me tell you before I went up, then my wife is telling her up. There is a person in the history which all of you would have known, probably you would not have, not have known Narayana Murthy and Kiran Bajan Dasha and others. Or for the, the examples that I am giving, there is a person called uh, Microsoft's owner, Bill Gates. Have you heard of that? Yes. You know, he dropped out of first year in college. And when uh, he was not doing anything, he was thinking and doing something. He used to write and open computers, close computers. A lot of junk was there in his room. Two years he was doing this. His relatives would come and say, look, your, your, your son is you know, going crazy. And mother would say, I don't know, he does something. And whenever we ask him something, he would never say he's not doing anything. He would say, I'm thinking something. You know, the most difficult thing in life is the art of doing nothing. If you can reach that stage, you will be as good as any of the Mahatmas that we have had in our history. That's a very difficult thing. When you are doing nothing, something or the other will keep on bothering your mind. If you can reach a stage when you are actually doing nothing and you are with the Almighty, that is the stage which is needed for that greatness. So Bill Gates will say, I am doing, he will never say I am doing nothing. That's a very difficult thing to do. He say, I am thinking something. And to cut a long story short, within two years, he came out with a program called uh, Windows. We all know. Previously, anybody who had to use computer would do a course of three months and then would he'll think of touching it. After Windows, anybody can learn and we all become masters. Even our vegetable seller is able to use computer. This is with Windows. And what it did is an amazing story after this. How much money he would have earned? I'll just give you an example of that. He earned so much of money that he became richest person in the world and every president would receive him wherever he would go. And in April 2010, he thought, I've made so much of money, what am I going to do with this? He said, I'm going to donate the entire wealth that I've earned to charity, to research in AIDS, drug abuse, helping women, women empowerment. So he donated entire wealth, entire, I'm saying 100% to this cause of society. And he said, 1st May 2010 onwards, whatever money I'm going to earn, it will be mine. And how much he earned in the next two years, 
I'm giving you exact figures. First May 2010 to 31st January 2012, 18 months roughly. If I tell you that uh, figure, you will not be able to put enough zeros. I'll give you in another way. If you decide to donate one crore every one hour to India, one crore every one hour to India, this wealth of 18 months that he earned will take 774 years to exhaust. 18 months. I'm giving you a figure which is there. 774 years to exhaust this wealth. After that, he's earning more. February 2012, March, April 13, 14, 15. You can imagine, you know, how much he would be making. If he could do it after dropping from school, there is no reason why can't you do this. There is no reason if you have focus and with the faith in your own self, you can achieve everything. And I said you are in a place which is named after a great guru. You are in a place where the whole world is looking up to. Wonderful country. And you are amongst 0.1% of the race which has reached this stage of uh, doing medicines or MSE or whatever. So, in your own self, you are a class by yourself. Only thing is you have to realize your potential. That look, if I can, if I can reach MSE stage here, there is no reason why I should not be doing well. It is not important to be a gold medalist, let me tell you. It's not important to be a first divisional all the time. Even if you are a third divisional, but if you have a mind to do something, decide that and set that goal right now. And after that, sky will not be the limit, let me tell you. You have to have a resolute in yourself that, look, I'm going to do this, I can do it. This is what is needed and this is what is unfortunately lacking in our country. So this is what I feel you need to have in your heart, in your mind, in your body, in your soul. If you have this, wonderful. There was a person called Shiv Kera, third divisional, uh, BA, BCOM, pass, or BCOM honors from University of Delhi, Shiran College of Commerce, only third divisional. And uh, he said he wanted to be a motivator. He was forced to do this BCOM against his own will. But then he told his parents, look, I'm going to be motivated, don't force him. But since he was forced into this course, he got a certification. After that, I will not tell you, he passed through a lot of rough weather in life and ultimately what he achieved, what he wanted. He's got his own plane, he's got a company called Qualified Learning System. He gave one lecture in the morning in London, next is in uh, somewhere in Asia, and the third is in Australia. So how much he's earning, how much, how well he's doing, uh, it's something to be seen to be believed. You read about what he does and uh, some other day I'll tell you about uh, his own self also. Uh, most of you, since it's a medical college, I'll give you another example and then I'll wind up. There was, uh, there was a city, there is a city called Surat in our country. And uh, somewhere in 94, it became one of the dirtiest cities in the country. And uh, there was an outbreak of plague in that place. It was a very deadly plague outbreak. And uh, then they said, what do we do? There was a collector called SR Rao from a science background, chemistry background to be particular. That's why I mentioned and uh, he said he will set this thing right. Within six months, whatever he wanted, he did that. He made Surat as one of the cleanest and the finest cities in the country. Even turnover was in six months. If he could do this, you are all there to achieve all this. And uh, what is Surat famous for, incidentally, do you know? Anyone? You will say it's famous for synthetic saris. Yes. Whatever you get there for 60 rupees, outside it is 600 rupees. But then what else? Diamond, somebody will say for diamond, yes it is. The the cutting there is so fine that even a boy of five years would start cutting after looking at his father doing the same thing. And our physics department professor went there when we told him to cut one 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 face with a with an instrument, he took twenty minutes to cut that face. It was very precise. But in Surat when we told them cut this face, he was talking to me and he was cutting, you know, sixty diamonds within that span of time. So such is the fine hand. And where it landed then, somebody came to examine this and this is a very fine hand. He said, uh, can you make this kind of string? He said, yes, we can make. What I'm trying to tell you is, 
the whole contract was given to them. Those springs are called stunts which you put it in your heart. 99% of our population would not know that majority of these stunts are being made in Surat. They are raw material given to them. They make it there, then it goes to Singapore. There they pack it, medicate it, pack it, and then put a stamp made in USA. And then it comes back to us, unfortunately. And we pay 1,25,000 for one stunt. And if somebody tells us, okay, I'll give you 25% off, we start jumping. What is it? Why don't you realize what is the cost of this? What is the most expensive alloy that we have? Platinum iodine? If you take the size of that, how much should it cost? 500, 1000, that's about it. Medicaid tells us 3000, 5000. Why are you doing one lakh? R&D, brain. And where are they using this brain? They are sending the material to us, getting it made here, taking it back from us. This is the greatness of our country and this is what we need to be harnessed in the right direction. You can also do it. Well, where is the problem? It's a question of thinking. Can I cut this? Can I make it? Can I medicate it? All open to you. So these are the examples I thought I'll tell you. If those people could do, you can also achieve. And there is no reason why you should not be achieving. Need is to talk to the teachers, to talk to some of us, find out which direction to take. And then after that, God will bless you in the best of ways. You have called me, you have invited us here. We are really very grateful to you. Some other day, I'll come and give a talk in corrosion in daily life, where you'll find how by using simple phenomena, your things can be improved and you can cut your budget by about 40%. And by word of mouth, if it travels across, that 40% will translate into a lot of, something like close to 5% of the GDP, which is going to be a huge amount. That's what we need to do. So with these words, I'm truly very grateful to you. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, I have already apologized for being late, but I try to make up by giving a shorter talk. So thank you so very much. God bless you. <laughs> I will say only a few words. Uh, Professor Dobra and Hina and all the faculty members and of course the students. So it's a great honor for me to be here and talk to you. Now you see already I think my husband has motivated you I think to a large extent. So he has left nothing for me to motivate you. But uh, I think I would like to uh, say important two points in our life. That is the sincerity and the focus. We should be very focused on our aim. So whatever is our aim and whatever we want to do, whatever is our goal, I think we should be focusing on that. And I think then nothing is possible, we can achieve that. And then the sin, sin, we should be very sincere and the hard work. And I would like to give you my example. You see, I am from a very small town, Diwali, I think, from the Haryana, very close to this place. And when I started in the 70s, when I was doing my BSc, and then those days it was very difficult for the girls to move out of the town. So my, but my parents, they encouraged me and I joined the Shetra University to do my MSc at the time. And then I moved to the Delhi University as a teacher. I joined this LGTB Khalsa College in 1980. And you know, a girl coming from Hewari, then to come to Delhi. So with my hard work and everything, I think I, whatever I wanted to achieve, so it was my sincerity and I think hard work and the focus in my life. So I achieved I think everything in my life along with my husband. So here you see that I am very punctual for my classes and I think all these things are going to pay in your life. And I never knew that uh, you are just achieving whatever you are achieving, your students gives you a feedback. Uh, higher authorities and Thank in 2010 our vice chancellor uh, professor Dita Painter he just he just wanted to know what our teachers are doing in the Delhi university so he wanted to have some opinion so what he did was that he went to the various department he went to chemistry department also so we talked to the students to their feedback and then he, on the basis of the feedback, he selected two teachers from the various colleges for the Distinguished Teacher Award. And 
I think I was the lucky one, so I got that distinguished teacher award, and that was I was the only one from the Khalsa College who got it, and it was only for the science teachers. So I think it was my hard work and uh, focus in my life. So I just I think my husband has already motivated me. So I hope now nothing to say more. So without taking any more time. So I thank you very much for inviting me to be here and I just say nothing is possible for you. You are the young people and already my husband has told that in our time we have to struggle for each and everything. Even for a simple photocop uh, photocopy of anything we want to pay, we have to pay too much, it was very expensive. Now at every moment you find the photocopy machine. I think here also it will be Available, you are in a very good institute. All the facilities are available to you, and I think you are going to uh, enjoy this life in the, this institute and the university. So I just wish you all the best, and thank you very much for everything. I'm thankful to Dr. Gurmeet sir, Dr. Gurmeet Kaur Madam for accepting our invitation and wonderful lectures. This provided by them will remain useful for our students in the times to come. Speaker. The faculty members of the Faculty of Physical Sciences, LGT University, deserves congratulations for the job well done. I also wish to thank the students. And before concluding, let me express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for all those present here.